Hey guys, okay, here's a fall leaves weaving project. Very beautiful for the fall time. We're going to use um, leaves that you see outside as inspiration. And the first part of this is to create two drawings. Both of them will be the same. So decide on a leaf that you like and create it really big, large, and in charge on your paper. I want it to fill up your entire paper. You can choose any leaf that you like. And I'm going to give you a couple different examples here before I show you a little bit of a slower drawing. So I settled on a Japanese maple leaf. They're really beautiful. They're like a really deep, beautiful red. And all I'm going to do to start out is to draw straight line down, a V underneath it, and then some straight lines for the last four leaves. Japanese maples typically have all the leaves coming off this one center point. So after I draw the straight lines, then I'm going to use an organic line. Organic just means that it's not perfect, it's not measurable, it's just kind of a bumpy line to create each of the little leaves that stems off from the middle. And when I'm happy with my leaf and I've added the stem, it fills up the paper, takes up a lot of space, then I'm going to trace all my lines with Sharpie. For our next step, we're actually just going to create the same thing over again. I'm going to lay my paper right on top of my first drawing, and since I traced it with Sharpie, it's pretty easy to see through my paper. Now, this does not have to be a carbon copy, meaning it does not have to be exactly like the first drawing, but I want it to be pretty close. The closer it is, the more um, interesting my weaving is going to be later. So I'm going to trace all the lines as closely as I can to the first one, and then I'm also going to trace my second drawing with a Sharpie. Now that I have finished drawing, I'm going to paint both leaves. Japanese maples are a beautiful deep red, so I'm going to keep that in mind as I am painting this first one using some red tones. But don't get caught up in just using one single color, um, because using multiple colors and blending them together for these leaves, those beautiful fall colors, reds and oranges and yellows, will definitely help you out. Also, remember to use a contrasting or complementary color in the background. To red, the complementary color is green. To orange, the complementary color is blue. So there's some good ideas for colors to use in the background. Also be careful as you're painting because if your watercolor for your background color touches the color of the leaf, it's going to pull that leaf color out um, and it's um, going to blend your colors together. So just be sure there's just a nice little barrier between your leaf and your background. Also, after you paint your first leaf, put that one away to dry and paint your second leaf. And once those two leaves have had a chance to dry, you have two beautiful paintings. And I don't want to break your heart too much, but we are going to cut them. Um, don't worry, we're, we will be using them. However, we have to cut them in order to weave them together. I'm going to take my leaf, turn it over on the back, and I'm going to fold up just about like half an inch of the bottom. Now, after I fold it up, I'm going to use my pencil to trace right on that fold line. I'm just gonna make that straight mark all the way across. This is going to be my stop line, so nothing goes on below this line. You'll understand what I mean in just a minute. From that line, now I am going to create eight, about eight strips, so I'm going to draw a straight line, well, kind of straight, as straight as you possibly can. You can use a ruler for this if you'd like to. And I want to go all the way from my stop line to the edge of the paper. Okay, now once I have drawn these kind of straight lines, as straight as possible, I will have eight strips. 
on my paper. I'm going to now put the stop line at the top of my paper and I literally write the word stop. This helps me to remember not to cut this part of my paper off. I'm going to use my scissors and I am going to cut maybe a little straighter than I actually drew them because I'm seeing how not straight they are. I'm going to cut those strips from the bottom of my paper to the stop line and when I get to the stop line I do what? Stop! Yeah, don't cut them off. Don't keep going to the edge of the paper. That stop line is there to help you to remember to stop. All right, keep going and carefully cutting until you have cut every single strip. What you're doing right now is actually creating the loom that you are going to weave your other painting into. I can turn it over. My drawing is still attached. All the pieces are attached and I can turn it over and that piece at the bottom that I folded over, it will put it at the bottom and I have my strips. Now it's time to get out my other painting. Now for this one I'm going to use a ruler so my lines are a little bit straighter. See how my ruler fits perfectly if I turn it a certain way. If I go up and down vertical it does not fit but if I go horizontal my ruler fits perfectly. Flip your paper over to the back and put your ruler the way that it fits perfectly. There's nothing hanging off. I'm going to trace my ruler okay and I have one strip now and then I'm going to take my ruler and put it underneath that line and line it up hold it down tight and trace it again I'm going to repeat this line it up hold it down tight trace it again until you fill up your paper with those nice straight lines end up with seven lines on your paper so I'm actually going to number them this will help me to keep them all in order now I'm going to cut those strips and I know this breaks your heart a little bit too because cutting up a piece of uh, beautiful artwork is really hard but it's okay it's, I promise it's going to be okay Alright, once you have cut all your strips, put them in order, one through seven, and keep them in that order. Now I'm going to take strip number seven first. It goes at the bottom of my paper. I'm going to leave it first. I can see that it lines up with my other painting also. Now we folded under part of that painting, so we're actually going to fold this strip. This is the only one we have to do this. Um, we're actually going to fold this strip in half to weave it into our artwork. You can cut it in half, but you don't have to. You can just fold it in half to help you out. So I'm going to weave, and remember the pattern for weaving is over, under, over, under. I'm going to start out going under a strip, Next, go over, under, over, under the next one, over, under, over. And we just keep following that pattern. As soon as you get a strip through, you push it down as far as it will go to tuck it in and to keep it nice and um, it to keep it nice and lined up. Now I'm going to use my next strip, make sure it's not upside down or turned the wrong way. And I started going under first and I'm going to go over, under, over, under, over, under. Notice that the pattern keeps going. It's going to look like a checkerboard pattern. If you get it done and it doesn't look quite right or if it's not tucking in really well so it's falling out, then that might need, mean you need to redo it. Okay, I started out going over last time, so now I go under, over, under, over, under, over, and tuck it down. Push it down as far as it will go so that it will lock into place. 
And my next one, I need to start out going over, under, over, under, over, under. It's a pattern that continues over and over again. Remember to tuck it down and keep it locked into place. Now under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Oh, that one fell out just a little bit, so just go back and tuck it back in. It's a little easier for that to happen once you get closer to the top. Alright, now when you weave your last strip in, you'll notice that it hangs off the top just a little bit, and that's okay. Weave it in, and then make sure everything is tucked down as far as it will go. So press your strips and push them down to the bottom so they're right next to each other. Make sure everything is tucked in on the edges, and then use a glue stick to glue down all the tabs. This will hold everything in place and keep anything from falling out. Um, just You can lift up the edges of each of the strips and glue them together to the other piece of artwork. Okay, you have a beautiful piece of artwork and a beautiful weaving. I cannot wait to see what you create.